Green. I hope that you had a wonderful weekend. Today's little episode I'm very excited about. I got an interview with Barbara Brackman, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So I just want to get time for people to log on and all that good stuff. Um, this weekend, I went through more fabric. So now I've got three big boxes that somebody's going to win and or it's going to be one box to each person. You'll have to help me decide that. I was kind of people are ha have days like that where just the couch is your best friend. <laughs> just your best friend. I, I really didn't want to do anything, okay? So I ended up finishing up Wentworth, which is on um, Netflix, and it is not for the faint of heart. I mean, I was addicted to it, but there is blood, guts, horrible, awful people, and wonderful people too. So if you're of the faint of heart, I do not recommend it. If you like Breaking Bad, you'll love her. Wentworth. And it was better than Orange, okay? It was a lot better than Orange because it got into character study. But I always figure out what, what I'm going to watch. Um, hey, Sue, from Joanne Sharp. So she turned me on to this next one. We've watched two episodes, and it's opposite of Wentworth. It's on Mass... Probably a lot of you have seen it. It's on Masterpiece Theater, and you can get it on um, Amazon Prime, uh, the Durrells. The Durrells of Corfu. It is so sweet and so, again, opposite of the, the, <laughs> the bad ones that are out there. And basically, it's about a woman who has, one, two, three, I think four kids, and she's in England. It's during the 30s. She's lost her husband, and the kids are just poops, okay? And it's just not working out. And so they decide to move to the island of Cor Corfu off of Greece. And it's just adorable. Again, I've only seen two episodes. It's sweet. There's a couple laughs in there. It, it appears that it's going to be very, very, very endearing. So what else do we have going on here? Look at all you people. I hope you had good weekends. Got a lot of people on here. Yay! Oh, also, uh, D. Christopher's show is airing right now, and I feel, you know, I'm not, I'm, I just love D. And you, of course, she's the one that's teaching our Saturday sampler. And D, I met when we moved to Livermore. I believe we talked about it on the show. And this is how I think of D. Okay, she was in Livermore for well when I moved here. And she is, to me, the mommy duck with baby ducklings. She has brought so many people into the quilt world. And one of the things, she, she gets these followings going and all that. And the good news is, people, I think she's moving back up here this summer, at this area. Okay, people are asking about whether to pre-wash spinning spools. I probably would, and I saw another question was, should you separate out the lights and darks? You know, do what, I, I am not going to tell you how to pre-wash your fabric because my water is different than your water, all right? If it makes you nervous, just, you know, rinse them out in two different loads, or when you do your jeans, throw the darks in, when you do, you know, your dish towels, throw the lights in or something, but I probably would pre-wash it, did I? No. And I don't know why, but it's a different, this fabric is a different texture. It's just different, all right? So it's beautiful, too. I'm hearing from a lot of people that they get it, and they just go, ah. Oh. Um, so the pattern, we're going to start on Wednesday. And it is, don't get your hopes up too much with a grand pattern, but we'll have up on the site what you need to have for us to work together and do our thing. I didn't put it out purposely because on previous projects we've done, there's been plenty of yardage, plenty. Um, and this one, mm -mm, it is tight. It is tight. So there's certain ways I want you to fold it and cut it, et cetera, et cetera. But back to D. Uh, she's, she's, she is our Saturday Sampler girl. And she also shows airing right now. So back to D with the duck and the ducklings. I, I digress. John asked a question and there went the squirrel. So, so she 
brings in beginners like there's no tomorrow, but she also teaches children. And she is very good with children. Let me tell you, well, she's an, been an educator on all grade levels, all the way up to college right now. And so she has a very um, straightforward way to work with kids, things you might want to consider. And then we do another segment on a star block and it carries into the kids stuff. Then we do show and tell. And then she's doing some really cool um, off, off topic, arty type things that I think you'll be very impressed with. In fact, a lot of it has to do with uh, decorative paper napkins. And it, I was in a, I was in a dream the other day that there were all these decorative paper napkins that I could get a nickel each. And I thought, you know, I should be buying those. And it was because of the remembering of the show. So make sure you check out Dee's show. She's just salt of the earth and she knows her stuff. Now, the other thing is two weeks ago, she did the isosceles triangle the square and she got befuddled by it. And so I talked to her and before she did um, pineapple this last Saturday, she showed how to paper piece it. The reason she didn't show how to paper piece it the week before was she thought there would be too many moving targets of how to follow along when you're teaching. You know, when you teach, you got to kind of figure out, okay, what am I going to say? What am I not going to say? And go from there. So somebody else at, oh, I am still taking questions for John. You got some good ones. And she, um, he will be doing Friday because I'm going to be in Joanne Sharp's class. I'm so excited. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and actually Wednesday. As soon as we're done here, I'm out of here. I'm going to go have lunch with um, Wendy and Meryl and uh, do some exchange of stuff. And I, it's like it's almost feeling normal. I've just got to get my energy back up. It's like I'll be around people for too long and I just won't go but I am an introvert. So here we go. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, somebody else asked about the lice. John wants me to do a whole thing on the studio and I will, but I know some of this stuff you need to know now because you're in the same position. I had halogen lights and they were too hot and they could take down the Liver Livermore electrical grid. And I believe I spoke about this before, but this is what I'm using. And what I want you to see is because I'm on a slant ceiling, it has to be a gimbal. And that means that the inside light bulb can swivel this way and that way. Uh, we just turn, it's uh, not sunny outside. We just turn on the lights in here and it's just wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And it's not a big deal to change from the track to this stuff. I mean, it's gonna cost you money. Of course it is. If, you, if you're not on a slant ceiling, you don't have to get gimbal and because the gimbals are more expensive. But this one, I don't know why it's not in the ceiling, but I wanted to show you something really cool. It has this, these different settings on the back. So I can decide where I want my light to be, that what kind of light, warm light, cool light, pure light, you know, whatever. Set it, then it gets popped in and then it's it's good. And my lighting guy said that these should last like 20 years. I hope I'm around that long, right? So, okay, I have the halo and I love them. Good choice. So, um, John, okay, if you want to ask John a question, don't do it here. Do it in, send it to my Gmail. And it's a l e x a n d r s n at gmail.com. Okay, so on Friday, I showed you the basics of how to draft a block, which um, is wonderful if you've got Barbara's book. There's more things we can do on that down the road if you'd like. But Barbara, well, let's just, let's just get into our interview with Barbara, and hopefully I can pop it up real fast here. There it is. See you in a bit. I'd like to introduce somebody that I've known for a very long time. We go back, Barbara Brackman. Hi, Barbara. How you doing? I'm doing great. Good to you, see you. Yeah, you brought something up. You were on Simply Quilts. I, I don't know when, but the makeup artist didn't make it to our houses today, but I think we look pretty damn good. <laughs> we look gorgeous, right? Right. <laughs> we're, not, um, we're, oh, we're not in L.A. Either. Right, exactly. It's bad for us. It's raining in Kansas. 
Well, it's beautiful here. I wish you were here. So I have been talking so much about your new book, The Encyclopedia of Peace Patterns by Barbara Brackman. Of course, I own. I even wrote something on the back. Hey, you know what? I don't do that for just anybody. It's got to be something pretty special. I was very pleased that you, you wrote the, the blurb. The blurb. blurb. Um, so here's the thing, you guys. You have to know. It, Barbara has done three renditions of this book, correct? Mm-hmm. Let's show them the first one and talk about it and when it was. All right. This is the heavy one. It's a binder. It's a binder. I used to... They're three hole punch. They're eight volumes. I, I spent my time making these books and shipping them. And they <laughs> were heavy. They were heavy. That's I when had I had it. Try. I had and then, it. Then it went, then American Quilter Society published it lighter. And uh, these are all black and white, though. You know. Just, I drew all these little pictures with an India ink pen at night after I taught kindergarten all day. But, you know, <laughs> this was wonderful after teaching kindergarten all day because I could make those blocks do just what I wanted. I didn't know you were a kindergarten oh. teacher. I didn't oh, know I that. I was. I was. <laughs> Special ed in kindergarten. And so now we've got the snazzy one that's black and white and color. I, oh, okay. I love okay. how it's laid out, Barbara. I love everything I about it. That. Yeah, I do too. I, I mean, love it's it. fabulous because yeah. I didn't know it. The people <laughs> at each you did it. Well, you take the your name. Hey, baby, your name's on the cover. Okay. Oh, excellent. Right, right. One of the things I want to ask about in the book and how did you know this stuff? Like, you'll pull up a block or say a block, and you might go there, and there might be, you know, eight different names of that block. How did you get all that information? Well, I think it's called obsessive compulsive collecting, but I, you know, I just love collecting things. And I realized when I was pretty young that it's easier to collect information or it's, it's cheaper to collect information than it is objects because you don't have to dust them or put them on a shelf. And when, when I was a special ed teacher, I used to travel around the state a lot doing workshops for teachers. And so at night I'd have nothing to do and I would go to the library and see what kind of book magazines they had and I especially got into old agriculture magazines from the like 1890s 1920 and every little library in Kansas still had them back then so that's where I got all the names just collecting and then I had very good friends like Cuesta Ben Berry and Mary Kay Walvogel that collected too and so I'd go visit them and just copy and then and I copied the onto index cards when I started Our index and cards <laughs> there were no photocopy machines there was no digital camera. That is hilarious. Now, I um, I know a lot of people, when I started quilting, you had to draw draft things out. I hate to use that word because mm -hmm. it's a big, scary word. And um, mm -hmm. now I think many quilters are dependent on patterns, et cetera. So they don't really mm -hmm. understand how to take a block and make it any size. Oh, but wait, mm -hmm. there's more. And it's called block base. And you are involved with that and have been for a long time. Well, years ago, Blackface or EQ, yeah. which is run by Penny, Penny uh, McMorris and her husband asked me if we could just convert the uh, the notebook into a computer program. And I said, great, because I had really thought about that as it, it, it should be computer mm -hmm. thinking, because mm -hmm. that's the way it is. Um, and then we did one block base and then the operating systems changed and then we did another and then the operating systems changed so this year we decided we would do the well, last year a, a third version we call it block base plus and it's for windows 10 and for max so they did this you know i i, I know how to think like a programmer but i i can't do the language so they did all this with their wonderful programming department and then we got it done and she said, well, we've got all the color pictures here. We could just make a book. And so they printed the encyclopedia. So really the program came first and then the book, but the program took a lot longer to, to get sure. in a format that could be searched. So it'll print, I think, 4,200 piece patterns, any size you want them, with templates or paper piecing. And I don't draft patterns anymore either. I don't block this too. Well, sure. So let me say one thing that I really appreciate about this book, and I'm wondering who came up with this idea. Okay, let me get this in front. 
so in the in the old in the other book, it was just the names, and then you could just cross reference and this and that. But up here, we get this in front. There, you can see the manipulation. Like the blocks below are the block up here is like the mother block, and then it has all the other blocks underneath that can be made from this. Who came up with that idea? Well, that's me, and that's the way I think. You know, like a computer. When I first did this, I actually, you know, Carrie Hall collected blocks. And she arranged hers by, um, by name. Mm -hmm. And so you, if you had eight names, you'd have to make eight cards. So I thought if you did it by seam, seam allowances, sort of think them like a computer, um, you, it would be more efficient. And then, you know, you just get addicted to going, I wonder how many stars there are that are structured on this exact same seam allowance or seam mm -hmm. lines, but then more detailed, more details. And so that's sort of how it grew. I, I can't, I, I honestly, I can't, and I'm not just saying this because I've got you here. I can't imagine this not being on every quilter's bookshelf, period. It, when I would, when I would write my books, you know, and they'd have mm -hmm. like quilts in it, you know what I would do? I would sit down and I would just go through and then I'd start putting posty notes. Like, I like you, I like you, I like you. And I, I use it like there's you tomorrow. Posty notes. Posting. There, there yeah. you go. Now, now, you are hanging out with some people I know and some people I don't know. And yeah. you have a YouTube channel and it's called The Six Know It Alls. Yeah. <laughs> Six spelled out. No, for the last year, you know, we've been kind of lonesome. And so I, I got together with some friends from the American Quilt Study Group and we have a party every every Monday night. And there's six of us, and they're all know-it-alls. Uh, Julie Silber, oh, she knows everything. And Mary Kay Walvogel from Tennessee. And then uh, some museum curators. Um, Lynn Zachick Bassett, who's from New England and knows everything about early New England quilts. And Alden O'Brien, who's a curator at the BAR Museum in Washington. And then our good friend Debbie Cooney, who collects quilts and knows all about Maryland and edited co-edited the maryland book so we get together and you know we'd sit around and say what are you doing well we weren't doing much <laughs> last right. year so we start showing each other quilts what do you think about this what do you think about this and we all had opinions and disagreed sometimes. but it's so wonderful to have people from five different six different areas and so we started recording it because we're such show-offs and know it all <laughs> six show -offs. So then we've been putting it up there, oh, at once a month. And our friend Tara, Tara Miller, who's our IT girl, IT guy, she's really knowledgeable about uh, YouTube and streaming and things like that. So we've uh -huh. really seen this. But Tara won't be on screen. She says oh, she's behind, behind the camera there. So look up six know-it-alls on YouTube. And we, ha we have a, a, web page, a Facebook page that'll give you some information, too. But we're going to try and do it once a month for the next year. Um, and we have many books to look at. We, we, oh, wait a minute. I, don't want to play. I want to hear what you guys say about this one. So um, we'll go on. I, I, um, I got, I think, one of the original emails from Julie. And I just, it was, I think we might have even put it in our newsletter. It just slayed me. I thought it was hilarious. Because here's the thing. You and... You guys have been around the pool hall for a long time, and so. and so have I, and so have I. In fact, I think Julie asked me to be a guest on one, and I was busy or something. I want to be a I want to be a part time know it all. Well, you know, we we're going to do it once a month. We have other engagements. Like uh, we're we're optimistic we might even have a real life come soon, <laughs> so we can go places and like go out. But um, so we're going to have only five know it alls, and that doesn't that's lying. That's that's misrepresentation. So we'll have guests know it all. So that you can have a guest. I can be like the you know the extra person on the view or whatever you know. Yeah. Um, Hollywood. Um, right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's what we've sort of descended to. Hollywood Square. So I'm going to ask you something. I have a cat trying to get up here. She's going to climb to me. Um, I'm going to ask you. Are because you have been around this industry for a long time. You wrote that first book, I think, before you said in 79 or something like that. And mm -hmm. that's when I started quilting. Are you amazed at how the industry has morphed and changed and all that good stuff? Not my pal. 
Oh. <laughs> Goes. Am I amazed? Well, I just sit back, you know, you just start, oh, another technological change. My computer, well, we both have been having the computer trouble. Um, you know, you have to keep up constantly. And then Tara throws this YouTube stuff at me. Tara, I don't I know. want to be that good. Um, but am I surprised? No, because, you know, change accumulates. But as far as the industry, I'm always pleased to see how, how consistent it is, how much people love to quilt. And it, it's just so satisfying. And I still, I still meet three times a week with different sewing groups and still make quilts. So, you know, but it changes as you, as you get older, because you, uh, if you don't buy as much fabric because you're, uh, and also, I don't know, I don't know that I can attest to that. <laughs> well, I, I, I hear it from people, but also your quilts get smaller That's because, because you go, well, every daughter-in-law I have has six. <laughs> and so I'll just make a little wall hanging for her. Or there's a new baby. So mine are getting smaller. smaller. Mine are. Mine are too. Yeah. Or it's like I, I, I want to be done with it. I'm done with you. I'm done. Oh, that's true. No, yeah, 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 yeah. So attention spans. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's good. Yes. Hey, just out of curiosity, um, are you planning on going to market this spring? Or I'm sorry, this fall? I would love to. Wouldn't that be nice? I think I'm going. But I, oh, good. Well, see, I... I don't know if I have any to show, but it's certainly worth just going. Oh, I do. I forgot blackface. I could go for it. Yeah, I'm thinking, oh, the thing is, I'm not doing, you know, I worked on that for a year. Every day I'd get up. And I'm not doing anything right now, so I feel like I'm retired again. I've retired like six times. And oh. this, we're not doing a thing. Well, what is gardening. Well, one thing that we talked about before we came on is that, okay, even though we are all sequestered, we're, mm -hmm. we're now connecting worldwide and that's mm -hmm. huge. You have a huge following uh, where outside the US? France. France. Now, one of the things I'm doing, I always do a block of the month for free on my quilts, Civil War quilts blog, just because I love doing it. And, and um, this year I did the Alcott's, the Louisa May from the Little Women. And so every month you get a block of the story, gossip about the outcomes. And the French people love it. I have so many French followers. So, of course, this is good for my French, which is horrific. And uh, we've been, I, you know, some of the posts are in French. And I learn every morning I get up and read a little French. Um, How does somebody find that? How does somebody jump on board with that? Well, look for, for the Facebook page. When you even search Facebook, hands all around, one word. And that's the name of the quilt we're making. And it's all stars, pretty simple stars. Okay, cool, cool. Hands all around. Hands all around. And then you've got, okay, Facebook. You've got your YouTube channel, Six Know-It-Alls, S-I-X. Now, I can't, we had the discussion because there's a lot of know-it-alls, whether we should put hyphens. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's no hyphen. Six, S-I-X-K-N-O. Well, I took A L L S. I think that's it. But if that doesn't work, put in some hyphens. <laughs> I think at, at this stage in our lives, it what does Julie really think? Awesome. Julie, Julie's the one who loves the hyphens. She's oh. always telling us that us and know it all. She said, "If we know." It all. What? <laughs> Love Julie. I would never say we know it all. I always say, "Well, let's oh. know it all." Oh, I love so anyway, it. you talk. I tell you. The discussion gets far afield, but never, never less confident. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm already packing my bags to be a guest. <laughs> oh, your, your virtual bags. Exactly. Well, you know, I do a lot of photoshopping of pictures of us, and I, anytime I can find a picture of six women having fun in, in black and white, I can photoshop it. It just oh, that's so amuses well, You're me one up on me with that. You're one up on me. Well, see, yeah, that's that's my hobby, Photoshop. Well, Barbara, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day. Um, again, I cannot speak highly enough. You know, it's not just this book. I think of how you really helped significantly shape the industry with your publications. Thank you. Thank you. you know, I worked for Clifford's newsletter for years, and, and I think that really, you know, 20, 30 years, that was such an important thing. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Were you there when Jan McGee was there, just as a side? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love her. Yeah, but you know, I know it's we didn't do it digitally. I mailed things in, and once a year I'd go out and sit around. So I really, you know, didn't know the people so well. Just right, like, right, mm -hmm. right. But I talked to Bonnie constantly on the phone, you know, because she didn't go out. She had to run a magazine, and she'd say, "What did you see? What did you see at market?" So. Well, that's exactly it. And and in a sense, that's just a way, I mean, that's what quilting has been forever and ever. It's just word of mouth, shared, et cetera. So mm -hmm. I hope to see you. Have you gotten your shot? Oh, yes, I have two shots. Then you need to be at market. <laughs> <laughs> I have two shots. And my girlfriends and I are meeting inside without masks, five or six of us at a time, and having so much fun. I mean, it's only been two weeks, but I, we're following Dr. Fauci's so am I. Hey, you want to who, know who I'm going to be hanging out with in a couple of weeks? Ooh. Joe Cunningham. Mm. I get I to don't I him. don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're lucky. I love Joe Cunningham. And we'd make him a know it all, but we're terrified of him. <laughs> 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 we wouldn't get a word. And he knows it. We wouldn't get a word in it. <laughs> oh, he's great. So yeah. thank you so much. Have a great weekend. And um, I know people <laughs> will enjoy this, that you're the brains behind the well, you and then EQ, too. EQ. It's a fabulous EQ. you. Well, I, I can't wait for Barbara Bradman. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much. Thanks, Barbara. Have a great weekend. Barbara Brackman week. <laughs> I got to tell you, that was an infomercial right on. And it's because I so believe in this book. And then uh, Carmen asked, is there a computer, um, you know, add-on? And yeah, we talked about that. And I have some pretty exciting news about that, okay? We were gifted a block base, all right? The computer program, it's the new one she was talking about, uh, block, block, block base plus and one of you are going to win it now if you can't wait until friday when john says who the winner is you can go order it get it and then if you happen to win we'll just credit you your money back but this is absolutely fabulous she said 4200 quilt blocks here it says four but um Yay. I, I'm i so excited for her. You know, it's so funny because I see Barbara once in a blue lagoon and it's there's just so much commonalities with us as quilt makers. Uh, Gloria, I, I saw that you were having trouble ordering something. Um, we're working on that like there's no tomorrow, but everybody, the best way if you're having problems is to call customer service at thequiltshow.com, all right? Because it, it right, John? Customer service at thequiltshow.com. No, she's having trouble that way. We didn't oh. have any spinning spools up. I just put 30 in. Oh, okay. Then, uh, Gloria, I got this wrong. Um, but, but remember, if you guys have problems, that's the best way to get hold of us. She was having a hard time finding spinning spools because we're cutting as madly as we can and trying to make sure we don't put up more than we have available. John just put 30 more in the store. So there are 30 more kits there. Yay. Thanks, John. Um, we are going to, I'm looking at my little notes here. Oh, so how do you maybe win this? What you're going to do is in the newsletter today, there was a place where you could click and go and throw your name in the pot. You could also go to uh, the site itself. And Kristen did something really fun. Okay, you throw your name in the pot. Give us your correct email address or we can't get hold of you, right? You throw your name in the pot, but then you get one vote. But then she takes you on a virtual scavenger hunt, and it's super easy, uh, where you could potentially get four more um, tickets in the pot. So you might want to go do that. Again, John will be do he John gets to be Santa Claus on Friday because but I'm gonna be in um, bliss in Joanne's class. All right, so yay! You've been so patient. Spinning spools is this Wednesday. But I think I'm going to put it off for a month. I'm kidding. I won't do it to you. And what we're going to do on Wednesday. Okay, so Pauline, that means you can enter potential. You can enter once. 
but within, and if we find, if we find you do duplicates, you get knocked out. So don't be a cheater. Okay. You enter once, but within that one time, then you have a potential to pick up four more. Okay. Just by scooting around the site. And Kristen made it really easy. Like she gave links to where you need to go and all that kind of stuff. So on Wednesday, we're going to talk about pre-cutting some stuff. We're going to cut, talk, I'm going to get you ready to go. All right. And then on Friday, we're going to do, ask John, if you have any questions you want to ask him, email me personally at A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N at gmail.com. And I'll see you Wednesday. I signed up for the newsletter, but have never received it. Okay, go look in your spam, Jane. Go look in your spam. That happens a lot of times. And then once you accept it, you'll be okay. And if it, that's not the case, get hold of us at customer service at thequiltshow.com because we have, it's easier for us to do via email, okay? When will the spinning spools, Ronnie, I'm going to put it up um, like Wednesday. It'll be up Wednesday when we start. It's 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 a content guide is what it is. I mean, it's up there, but it's a content guide. Yes? You do not need EQ to make block base. You do not need EQ to make block base work. You do not need EQ to make block base work. Okay, you may be talking more about that on Friday. What happened also this weekend is our dishwasher broke and the is that the repair guy that just came, Steve? Yeah, so Steve's here to fix our dishwasher. If I had to pick one appliance, that would be it. If not my refrigerator, not my washing machine. If something has to break, make it my dishwasher. But please be able to fix it, Steve, because I love, 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 love this dishwasher. Okay. Uh, love these lives. Look forward to more of the quilt math lessons. I think, MJ, you might be the only one. <laughs> Okay, I, uh, I today's crazy. I've got a lot of things to do, and I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. And if some of you are going to do these in scrap, I can't wait. So have a good day, you guys, and I'm going to go see if we can figure out what the heck is wrong with my dishwasher. Bye-bye.